Hello and welcome back to RV Motor Coaching Newbie to Pro. What we're going to talk about today is how to enjoy your motor coach. It's time to go out and explore and see the world. Find a camper resort, book that reservation, and get outside and enjoy the amenities that they have. How to make your reservation, questions to ask while you're booking it, whether to book online or live, and how to do your basic hookup. First step is how do you pick the resort that you want to go to? We do it a couple of ways. We pick an activity that we like or an area that we like and then we Google it and we find out parks that may be located in that area or around an activity. You can also join an association and the associations have affiliations with some parks and they'll give you a publication that will tell you about the park, where it is, how it is, and um, some of the ratings on it. Another option is to use RV magazines. There's several are out there and there's plenty of ads in the back and articles about different parks in different areas. Also another excellent resource is states. The states tend to put out publications on their state trying to promote it for tourism and they have some that are specific towards RV parks. Use that information and put it together with what you like to do, where you like to visit, and pick a park. The next step is once you pick the park, how do you book the reservation? Do you use an online method or do you just call directly? I would suggest at first calling directly. Online method is great if you have the experience you know what you're looking for and you can be very specific online and do the searches and get the information that you need to book it. But if you haven't done it before, call and use that person on the other end of the phone as a good resource. Ask questions. Ask lots of questions. And make sure you know what the requirements are for your RV or motor coach. What power you need, the size of it, and whether you want to pull in or back in. Keep in mind you have two kinds of sites. You have the pull through, which is an easy in, easy out. You don't necessarily have to disconnect or back up. Although sometimes you will have to back up slightly to make adjustments or the back-in kind where you physically have to back in and do the logistics of getting into the spot. And don't forget when you are backing in to make sure that you have somebody there guiding you that you can see in your mirrors and they can see you. Also, know your specifications for other vehicles. Do you have more than one vehicle with you? Do you have a golf cart? Do they permit golf carts? Do you have an ATV? Do they permit ATVs? And your car dolly. If you tow a vehicle, is there a spot that you can put your car dolly in for temporary parking? Also, a very important question is once you're booking it, ask them what the refund and cancellation policy is. Because things do happen in life and plans do change sometimes. So if you're booking a online discounted rate that's non-refundable, keep in mind those words are non-refundable. Also find out what the time frame is for cancellations. How many days out do you have to be to give a notification to get your rate 100% refunded if you do have to cancel? Ask them about early check-in and late check-out policies. It'd be nice sometimes if you can get into your site a little bit earlier. Most check-ins are around two to three and you can check that and possibly get in earlier. Or if you want to stay later during the day, most checkouts are around noon. And so if you want to stay till six or later at night, see what their policy is and how much that would cost to do that to extend your stay slightly. It's a great, a great way to inexpensively increase your stay time. Ask them about camp rules. Or when you get there, know the camp rules. This way you know what's expected of you and if you have a pet, how to deal with that. Find out what the hours are for the facilities, if they have a pool, or when it's open, when it's closed, so you know how to plan your day. It's important to teach your kids, if you have kids camping with you, that the site is actually kind of your house. And it's not nice to cut through other people's homes just to take a shortcut. So teach them to respect the other people's area. Parking and guests. Where is the auxiliary parking and where else can you um, and do they have a guest policy? Do you have to pay per guest? How does that work? So somebody's gonna come visit you, you wanna be able to share your time and make sure that um, they're enjoying themselves too. Most of all, 
you want to respect, respect others. Other campers or RVers in the resort, respect the resort and the site that you're in. Do the Boy Scout rule. Keep it cleaner than when you found it. Meet your neighbor. And when you're parked in the campsite and you're all set up, make an effort to meet the people around you. You'll be surprised the relationships and friendships that you can develop because you have something in common. You like to RV, so why not? Just meet them and maybe you'll uh, develop a new lifetime relationship with someone. Here are a typical RV with your power meter. And underneath, you're going to see two outlets. One with the five plugs, I'm sorry, four plugs, is the 50 amp. And the one with the three plug holes is the 30 amp. 30 amp is going to be 115 volt. The 50 amp is going to be 220 volt. Remember that when it, before you ever hook into your outlets, turn your breakers off, and then you're going to plug in, and then turn your breaker on. And that way, you'll safely connect your power supply. You also have the septic, which is right here, and then your water hookup. And we'll show you what they look like when they're connected. So let's go over here. Water connection, and here we have two hoses. One we uh, use for spraying off when you come back from the beach and it's hooked up to the back of the RV for the uh, spray nozzle and I keep it off because I'm not using it. And the other one's the water that goes into the RV itself. Notice we, I use a splitter. It makes an easy way to add a water line. Very inexpensive to get. And make sure you're using the white hoses or a purple hose, which is a drinking quality, non-transfer flavoring, non-lead transferring hose get those on Amazon very easily. The septic line, you can buy a basic kit, which is going to have the hose and two couplings. You use a 90 degree angle going into this drain line, and then the motor coach, which we'll walk up and I'll show you in a second, we use another 90 degree. Some folks like to use a rack that that sits on that acts as an angle so it flows downhill. Now remember, when you're connecting your water hose, I like to use a water regulator to govern the pressure coming in to make sure I don't have too much pressure. And I like to get use the one with the gauge so I make sure that I'm not, I have enough pressure. We had an issue with not enough water pressure using the toilet. And this was a good cure to that. Once again, this is available on Amazon also. The water filter, it's an option. You can use that if you want. We we'll bring the water line in, connect it to the fitting, and you just turn it on at your hydrant good to go for your water. As far as your septic goes, I can either connect with the large hose and just pull valve and dump, or I can connect this hose on and I have a vitiator which chops up your wastewater and it pumps it out. I have an elbow here and an elbow at the other end of the hose. So you don't need anything fancy, just the hose and two elbows to do your connections. When you're backing into your site, keep somebody behind you to make sure that when you're backing in, you're clear, you're not going to hit anything, and to help you guide as far as where you're at. It's always good to have that second set of eyes, and if you can't see them, they can't see you. So a good communication process is to communicate that. Also, once you're in sight, what's the procedure and how do you go? Once you're backed into your site, what's the steps of procedure you use to follow? to get hooked up and start camping. I chalk my wheels and then I do the leveling process inside. I use the levelers and I make sure that my motor coach is sitting level so it's comfortable for you inside. You're not walking on an angle. Then I'll connect my electric, my septic, and my water connections. After I have those done, cable TV if you have it, we will then go back inside the motor coach and I'll put the slides out. And then once the slides are out, I'll put my canopies out. And you're ready to start camping. When you're ready to leave and depart the resort, do just the opposite in the opposite order and you'll be fine without any issues whatsoever. Uh -huh. When you're departing to park, also please remember to do, as I said earlier, the Boy Scout rule. Keep your site, or leave your site cleaner than you found it. It's very important for the next camper to come in. Keep, just remember, you want to leave it as somebody would leave it for you. And so just do that quick walk around in inspection of the site. Make sure your trash is picked up, that you scooped out your grill if they have one there for you, and that the site is clean and neat. 
and then the next person coming in can enjoy it. And then if you do that for somebody else, I'm sure that trend will continue and somebody will do that for you. When you leave the resort, leave a review online and leave a review that's honest. If you have an issue with the result with the resort and something was not the way you anticipated it, talk to some of the staff there before you post something and give them an opportunity to talk to you about it and correct the issue if it's correctable instead of just posting it automatically. It's nice business practice to help the resort grow and develop that relationship. And sometimes things happen that you don't really realize and it's, not, it's out of the control of the resort or you. And so you want the resort to have the opportunity to have a two-way communication if there is an issue. And then leave a, a, a review and leave a review that has um, some positives on it and be honest with it. I'd like to uh, thank Galveston Island RV Resort for allowing us to be here to film this and to use their resort as a nice model. And if you're ever down in Galveston, Texas, look them up and uh, come stay with them. It's a wonderful place. Thank you. And don't forget, the products that we mentioned here will be on our description section with the uh, links to Amazon. So if you, you need something, just use that as an option tool to click it. Check our, uh, our on the bottom of our screen. Hit the thumbs up if you like what we did for you and we're helping you. And also, please remember to subscribe. We try to do different subjects every week. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.